Last night when I got home uh, from work, I was taking a look over in the preconditioning pen and that uh, big black heifer that I brought in. Uh, you know, I don't know if I said this when I first brought her in, but uh, she was slobbering real bad when I first brought her in. Uh, she was doing, uh, she just, uh, she was slobbering. And so I thought maybe she, uh, she was just heating up uh, too bad. Uh, she was just overheating. And yesterday uh, when I got home, I, I took a look at her and I was like, she doesn't look good. And so I ran her through the chute. And when I ran her through the chute, uh, she came in at like 107, like 108 uh, degrees Fahrenheit for body temperature. And uh, so I immediately hosed her down for about 10 minutes. I uh, uh, ran cool water over her and I managed to drop her temperature down to about 106 and uh about 105 106 uh and then uh i gave her a shot of uh antibiotics and uh this morning uh, she don't look real good uh, and uh she's still sitting at like a 104.3 but uh 104.3 i mean it's bad but it's not the worst fever that i've ever seen uh usually when they get over 106 that's when it starts becoming very concerning 104.3 104.5 i mean that is a pretty severe fever they are running a fever, but it's not 108. Uh, yesterday, I got home, and she was borderline 108. And I was like, what the heck is going on? And so I hosed her down. I hosed her down real good for about 10 minutes. And then uh, I took her temp again about 10 minutes later, and she was sitting at about 106. And this morning, she's sitting at about 104 and a half. She uh, so seems kind of lethargic. She doesn't seem real good. But, uh, I mean, uh, she's about uh, her temperature's dropped about uh, three and a half degrees from yesterday. So that's, uh, that's an improvement, uh, and I'm keeping an eye on her. And uh, when I found out that she was uh, running the fever, I ran the other calves through the through the chute as well. And uh, I ran uh, temps on them. And uh, the Hereford bull, uh, the Hereford steer, is uh, running a 104.1. And then I had another calf running a 103.9 uh, uh, or so, 103.7. And so, uh, you know, I temp checked uh, five out of the uh, the ten animals. I temp, I temp checked half of them, and three of them came in hot. And so I figured uh, I'm just going to give them all a shot of antibiotics. And so this morning I went ahead and I gave them all another shot of antibiotics. So uh, I figured, well, if uh, if I got 60% of the animals, but this is kind of, you know, I'm, when I give you the numbers, I'm kind of just giving you the reality of the situation. Oh, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's not just me. Uh, I guarantee you, uh, that, you know, uh, if anybody goes out into the cell barns and buys these small little calves, I mean, they're going to get sick. And then, uh, and this is the way that I put it. If you took a whole bunch of people, if you took a whole bunch of people and uh, you, uh, you ask every single person on the planet, at some point, did you, uh, did you have to take antibiotics? Almost everybody's going to say yes. I would almost guarantee, like, it's going to be over 99% of people are going to say yes, granted that they have access to medication. Like, if you live in somewhat of a uh, world that where, like, uh, you, you have access to medication, chances are you took antibiotics at some point in time. And it's the same way for cattle. I mean, cattle are not some... Uh, Cattle are not some, uh, you know, they're not some immune to disease, never get sick, uh, the babies are uh, invincible type animals. I mean, they're not, right? I mean, uh, the smaller the calf gets, the more problematic the problems become. If you have an animal that is smaller, the, uh, the worse that their problems become. You need to be very diligent. Uh, you know, me, uh, when, okay, I spend about, uh, you know, I probably spend three times more time on my little baby calves than I do on my big animals. And I have four times more big animals than I do small animals, legitimately. And so, uh, you know, and it's like, if you want to know what I do with the small calves, it's like I temp check them, you know, um, I give them all their vaccinations. I give them all their, uh, their medication. I tap, uh, you know, I get, I put them on a preconditioner pellet. I temp check them. And if they're uh, running hot, uh, well, I mean, uh, I'll give them uh, the antibiotic and, uh, you know, I temp checked uh, this morning. I temp checked the animals and out of five animals, I had three animals running a fever and uh, two of them are running it pretty, uh, pretty bad. Uh, one's running like a 104.5 and the other one's running a 104.1 and the other one's running a 103.7 or so. And so uh, I temp checked the animals. I temp checked five animals and I had three animals running a temperature, running a fever. And so I just went ahead and gave them all a shot of antibiotics because I figured uh, I might as well. I mean, that's 60% of the animals. 
I don't want the other animals getting sick from these animals. And if these animals got sick, then the antibiotics that I gave them uh, five days ago, six days ago is probably starting to wear off. That's that's how I that's how I thought about it. I gave it to them about five days ago, and if I give them antibiotics right now, it's going to take about 12 hours for the antibiotics to kick in, about 24 hours for the antibiotics to kick in. And so I figured, well, the antibiotics probably wore off, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and give them a second round of antibiotics because uh, there I have 60% of my animals running a fever, and so uh, I'm going to have to check uh, what I'm going to do. Uh, if I got, uh, you know, uh, tomorrow morning, I gave my animals the antibiotics today. And uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to take a look at them and I'm going to see if they're still running a fever. And if they're still running a fever, uh, I probably won't be bringing home animals on Monday. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm what I'm going to do. Uh, do I still want to go to the cell barn this week? Uh, maybe I'll go next week. I'll have to figure it out. And uh, But here's the reality. Uh, I was going to talk about this. But okay, if you take a look at what I did uh, last week, uh, five days ago, six to five days ago, I brought home uh, six animals. And the week before that, I brought home four animals. So over the last about a week and a half, I brought home about 10 animals. I brought home 10 animals over the last week and a half. And uh, realistically, one to two of these animals are going to die. Uh, it, you know, I legitimately, I can do a, whatever, a, you know, give them all medication, put them all on a high dollar preconditioner pellet, everything. I can legitimately, uh, you know, give them all their vaccinations and one or two of these animals are going to die. Uh, the thing about these cell barn calves, especially when you go and you buy them one at a time, you don't know, like me, I don't know where these calves are, are coming from. I don't know. Right. I mean, I might be buying somebody's problem. I don't know. I mean, uh. You know, one of the calves with the first day that I brought her home, she was uh, she was slobbering real bad. And I figured it was just the heat. And uh, I had the vet look at her and the vet said her lungs don't sound bad. And so uh, I f it was probably just the heat. And then uh, but I mean, uh, like, I don't know where these calves are, are, are what what happened to these calves and uh, why the uh, the owners decide. I don't know. Right. I mean, maybe the, the mama cow wasn't taking care of the calf. I don't know. Right. I mean, I honestly have zero idea. Uh, you know, I don't know where these calves uh, are from. Uh, I don't know what happened to them and why, you know, but every one, you know, I'll probably say uh, maybe, you know, uh, one out of 20 animals or so uh, that I bring home one out of, I, I don't know exactly how many animals are like, uh, you know, uh, the, the owner sold this animal because the animal was, uh, was a problem for them. And so they sold the animal. I don't know. Right. And so a lot of these calves, from what I have seen, the information that I've collected, et cetera, et cetera, just from what I have seen, I mean, a death loss of about 15% is about average. If I bring home 10 calves, I'm going to lose one to two of them. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, uh, I, and of course I am putting an effort to, to do better on that. Uh, you know, I always, I take a look at the numbers and I say, if I find a way to do better, then I'll do better. And uh, one of the things that uh, I'm going to uh, uh, do again this time around is I'm going to start putting therapies on the animals. Uh, I'm going to start uh, putting therapies on the animals again. I'm going to see if that really does anything. But the last time I used therapies, the last time I used therapies, it worked for about 24 hours. And then the calves uh, and then it just kind of uh, didn't seem to work anymore. And so uh, but I was like, you know, even for the first 24 hours, if it only works for one day, it's still very significant. Because these animals, the, the reality of the situation is that these animals, when I bring them in, that first three days is usually the hardest for them. The first three days is like the hardest. If you can get these calves past about three to five days, uh, the the uh, it, be, it gets easier. It doesn't become easy. It gets easier. Oh, and most of the time, uh, if, if the calves are going to have any problems, they're going to have the problems in the first two weeks. And so I was like, OK, well, in the first three days of those two weeks are like the uh, the most challenging time. I mean, you know, you know you're uh, got to keep an eye on the calves. If your calves are real small, you got to keep an eye on them to make sure they're eating. And if they're not eating, then you probably got to give them milk and uh, all sorts of problems. I mean, uh, you know, and then you got to it's just a lot going on on the first three days. And that fair piece from what I have seen. It uh it works for about 24 hours and I thought about it and I was like it's it's like a it's like a it's like, I don't even know uh it's like how much for a bottle I don't it's not it's not very much per animal I mean it only costs a couple of dollars per animal 
and i was like well if it if it's a if it's a couple dollars per animal three for three four five dollars per animal i'm just gonna give it to them and uh because uh the the first three days uh, are like the hardest for the animal if you take a little calf and you uh and you uh take it off the mama cow and you uh you know take them to the cell barn and then i buy the calf and i bring them home they're gonna freak out for about the first three days and so i figured well i'll give them the fair piece i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna do that again i'm gonna give them the fair piece and uh even if it only works for one day it doesn't really matter and here's the thing uh you know and i talked about the uh the financials of losing a calf and when it comes to losing a calf the amount of uh the amount of uh i guess uh financial uh damage is is almost negligible i mean because it's like if i lose a calf I'll just go to the market and buy another one. And by the time I, I've raised the calf and sold the calf, I mean, that calf has paid for the dead calf and also brought me a little bit of a profit. You know, the thing the thing about the financial tolls of losing a calf is that it's almost negligible. Granted that I don't lose like 80% of my animals. Uh, um, like for me personally, I'm not saying for everybody because there's a lot of ways to lose money in the cattle business. Like if you bring home cattle and you don't take care of them and your cattle start sliding back on the body conditioning score and now you got these 500 pound bone thin yearlings, you're going to lose money, right? I mean, uh, there's a lot of ways to lose money in the cattle business. And for me personally, it's like a, I have to lose about 60, uh, about 60 to 70 percent of my calves before I really even start to lose money. Uh, you know, uh, because uh, ultimately what happens for me is that eventually I will start growing grass again. I'm very good at growing grass. I raise these animals to a commercial standard, so uh, I get top dollar for my animals. It costs me almost nothing to feed my animals. I mean, realistically, for me to lose money uh, by uh, having an animal die, I would have to lose about 60% of my animals, 70% of my animals, before I even start to lose money. Legitimately, if I bring home 10 calves and only four survive, and I raise those four calves to like 850 pounds, I'll essentially make almost all of my money back. Almost all of it. And so the financial tolls of losing a calf are almost negligible in terms of money. And I've talked about this uh, uh, you know, pretty uh, thoroughly in the past. That for me, it's uh, it's more of the idea of that these animals are my responsibility and uh, I need to do the, you know, it, it just makes me feel miserable when I lose a calf. The, the money is negligible. The money, I can always make the money back. The money is negligible. Legitimately, I would have to lose about 70% of all of my animals to even break even, to just break even. Like 60% of all of my animals just to break even. And so, uh, you know, it's like if I brought home 10 calves and I lost six of them, I would I would make my money back and then I, I would be essentially be working for free, but I would make the money back. The money is negligible. When it comes to losing the calf, the money is negligible. The thing is, though, is I don't want to be sitting here, you know, uh, the losing calves, right? I mean, because it's like, you know, these, these are animals that I care about and, uh, you know, I want to take care of these animals. And, uh, you know, that that's that's the hard part is when an animal dies, it's like, man, this living animal just died. That's the hard part. The financials of the, you know, when it comes to the financials, and I'm not saying every, it's not like this for everybody. Because if you're not good at growing grass, if you don't know how to raise your animals to a commercial standard, if you don't even uh, like, a, maybe you don't even raise commercial animals, there are, are there are a lot of ways to lose money in the cattle business. There are a lot of ways to lose money in the cattle business, but for me personally, the only way for me to really lose money in the cattle business is to lose a lot of animals. And I've talked about this too, but uh, if an animal dies, that's essentially the only way that I lose money for me personally. And for me to actually lose money, I would have to lose about 70% of my animals. Because even if 30% of my animals survive, if only 30% of my animals survive, and let's say like by September, I'm growing grass again. I grow grass. I put the animals on grass. I feed them grass until about a March of next year. It, I mean, it, to, for me to grow enough grass to feed uh, whatever, right? I mean, uh, 10 calves is not going to be much money. And then uh, let's say uh, it, it's, it, I mean, the, the money's almost negligible. I mean, I would have to lose like a 70% of my animals, for me to start losing money in the cattle business and uh you know that's for me personally from the numbers that i have collected it would be about 60 percent 
And why is it like that? Because, well, because, I, you know, I buy commercial animals. I buy, you know, I raise them to a commercial standard. And I'm also very good at growing grass. And so when it comes down to it, uh, you know, me losing a calf, I, the, the money, the money's negligible. I mean, uh, like le legitimately, if I lose a calf, when it comes to the financials of the situation, I'll just go and I'll just buy another calf. You know, if I just buy another calf and I raise that calf, the calf will pay for the dead calf and it will also, and that calf will also uh, produce a profit. But I still, you know, I don't, uh, you know, losing a, losing a bovine is like the, uh, you know, it happens all the time. And so I tell myself, you know, um, you know, don't be too, uh, you know, hard, uh, you know, don't be too uh, harsh about it because uh, it's going to happen all the time. I mean, they're legitimately, if I'm, I've already said this too, but if you're in the cattle business, you will see animals die. You will do it. I mean, you will legitimately see animals die. I mean, uh, there there is no way around it legitimately no way around it uh you know it, it it happens and uh and especially if you're in a situation like me where you're bringing home uh, 200 pound calves all the time uh, you know and if like if you bring home 200 pound calves all the time i mean these 200 pound calves i mean they are uh they are they are the like a well i mean the, the lighter the calf gets the more uh severe the problems become and so, like, uh, if I went from raising 200-pound calves to raising 150-pound calves, the 150-pound calves would have significantly more problems than the 200-pound calf. If I went from raising the 150-pound calves to raising 100-pound calves, the 100-pound calves would have significantly more problems than the 150-pound calf. And so, you know, uh, these uh, usually I bring them in at about 175. And, uh, you know, it's like if I continue with this business, when I, you know, which I will, I am going to continue with this business because, I mean, it's the, uh, it's the, uh, I still, I still make it work. I still make a lot of money. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't really like, you know, but when, it, you know, but I have to come to grips with the idea. I, I mean, I came to grips with the idea a long time ago. I've already talked about this, but I've already, I've already discussed this, but you know, I've already come to the, uh, the I've already come to peace with the idea. A lot of people like, uh, you know, um, like, uh, I think a lot of people, they've never seen a farm before. They've never seen a farm before. They don't even know how to, uh, how a farm operates. They've never seen one before. Most people, like when you see me doing this, this is probably the first time you have ever, anybody has ever seen this. Almost, uh, granted that, you know, you don't go around on YouTube, but uh, just looking, uh, and even if you go around on YouTube looking around, uh, you know, uh, for uh, for farmers, most of them are not actually farming, right? Most of them are, are YouTube personalities. Like if you actually go around on YouTube and take a look around at different farmers, they're not actually making much money at all, if any at all, farming. They're making all of their money by, ve by being on YouTube. And me, I make all of my money farming, all of it. You know, like when you, uh, when you see me uh, doing this... Uh, I, uh, this farm on this 10 and a half acres, maybe I do about 12, uh, $14,000 a month. And so me, I legitimately make all of my money farming. And so I don't, I don't make a, a cent off of YouTube, not at all. And so that's the thing. It's like me, it's like when you will watch my channel and you go on YouTube and you take a look around at other channels and you see, uh, you know, uh, Billy Joe Bob and, you know, and they're not actually making money farming. Almost nobody is. And I'm just going to say that when it comes down to reality from what I have seen, I have not seen anybody even get to the 10% mark of what I do financially. And this is what I also mean by uh, after a certain point, it's probably too late and you should probably not even be considering farming. Most people should not even consider farming. If you, you know, okay, here's the thing. For anybody to legitimately make any money at all in terms of anything that is skill based, like if you are going to go out and you're going to play soccer and you're going to play soccer to a level that you can get paid, you will legitimately have to be like in the top 2% of everybody. If you want to uh, play the guitar and you want to play the guitar to a level where you're going to get paid, you're going to have to be like in the top 2%. And even when you get paid, you're not going to get paid very much money. I mean, I, I have not personally seen anybody that gets to the 10% mark of what I do. Not, not, you know, me, I make about a, let's just say I'm, you know, because I'm, 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 I'm in the process of increasing the size of my herd. 
and i've also got a second field that i'm working on and once i got that second field working on it uh, worked out and by next month uh, when the weather starts to cool i'll start growing my own grass you know i probably average about fourteen thousand dollars a month i don't know a single person that's even making one thousand four hundred dollars a month not a single one not a, not a single person and if I saw it, I would know. Like, legitimately, uh, you know, most people can't even make... Okay, so on this 10 and a half acre field, I probably make about 14... Uh, I would say on the average, it's going to be... It's about right now, it's about $14,000 a month. And here, uh, within the next uh, maybe about five months, I will have actually increased my income to about $20,000 a month. And from what I have personally seen, I have not seen even one person... Not even a single individual get to $1,400 a month. Not even a single person. Not, not even close. Most 10-acre farms, people don't do jack squat. I mean, you know, most farm, a lot of farmers end up losing money. I mean, actually go out into the world and talk to a farmer and see if they're like, you know, I legitimately started a farm. I took $12,000 out of my bank account I started a farm and now I legit one and a half years later, I am making $14,000 a month. See if you can find anybody, not even a farmer, just anybody. And this is, and here's another way to visualize what I'm talking about. Like if you actually take a look at what I'm doing, right? I paid for everything, legitimately paid for everything. I've paid for my house. I've paid for my car. I paid for my mortgage. I paid for everything. I paid for my business. I paid for everything. And still... Within the next, just the next about four months, I will have about $30,000 cash left over. If you take a look at where I am right now, within about 365 days, I will still have about $100,000 cash left over, even after I've paid for everything. And that is what it looks like to generate $2 million a year. If you if you want me to be dead if you want me to be honest and I you know you know me I probably generate about you know maybe about a, a million and a half to two million dollars a year and if and if you want to know what my balance sheet looks like I legitimately paid for everything my house my business my tractor my truck my living expenses everything I legitimately paid for everything. And three in three to four months, I will have like thirty thousand dollars cash left over, even after I've done everything. In about one year, in about three hundred and sixty-five days, I will have like a hundred thousand dollars cash left over, even after I've paid for everything. And that's what I mean by if you actually take a look at what I accomplished over the last year, there's only about 20,000 people in the entire country that managed to do what I did over the last year. Take a look at it for yourself. Go and see if you can find anybody that managed to do what I did. You probably won't be able to find a single person. And I think that this is also one of the things like it's like when I and I always say when I'm, you know, uh, the whole thing about sounding like a prick is that if I sound like a prick, I, you know, uh, I mean, I, I really don't care. I mean, uh, I mean, it just I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm telling the truth. Like legitimately, uh, you know, uh, they're, you know, OK, for me to find somebody like me. I would have to be in a room with one and a half million people and there would be one other person in the room that made as much money as me over the last 365 days. Legitimately. In terms of just free cash flow, not even equity generation, because legitimately I started this business and took it to about $14,000 a month of revenue with $12,000 that I had in my bank account, I legitimately turned a $12,000 savings account into $14,000 a month over the course of about a year and a half. And that business that I created legitimately did not exist until I started the business. And so by me starting the business, I essentially printed my own money. The business that I created has a monetary value to it. And it's probably a lot. 
I would say that within the next six months, I'll be doing about $20,000 a month. If you want to take a look at what my financials look like, I legitimately paid for everything. And I am still netting a positive of like $10,000 a month, $9,000 a month cash flow, just free cash, just sitting in an account, even after I've paid for everything. It's like it's like eight, nine thousand dollars a month just left over. And so that's what it looks like to generate two million dollars a year. If you want to know what it looks like to, to generate two million dollars a year, one and a half million dollars a year, you're looking at it. You know, and, and I am fully aware that I, you know, and here's the thing, and it, legitimately, okay, here's the thing. If you happen to find somebody like me in real life, which you probably won't, nobody will. I haven't met anybody like me financially ever in my entire life. I don't know a single person that's like legitimately over the last year, I took... $12,000 and turned it into $14,000 a month of revenue. I don't know anybody. I legitimately net a positive cash flow of like $8,000 a month. That's like legitimately how much money I have left over in my bank account after I've paid for everything. I don't know a single person that's done that. I'm the only one that I know. And from what I have seen from my perspective, you know, the chances chances are you, you uh, nobody is ever going to find a person like me. You probably won't. Just statistically speaking, like if you if you took a thousand people at random, and here's here's one way to look at it. I actually think about this. Like I, I wonder about this. So uh, you know, um, cause me, it's like uh, you know, uh, I wonder like if somebody just happened to see me. Like you know, like cause every once in a while, you know, like when I'm uh, filming a video out front, you'll see cars drive by. And I'll actually wonder, like, do these people, like, when they see me, do they actually understand? Like, uh, like, uh, like, are they able to just see me and go, this guy makes a boatload of money? Like, uh, I don't know how much money it is, but it is a lot. You know, like, I wonder if people have the capacity to see that. Because I was like, you know, like me, when I go to like a Costco or like me, when I go to a Walmart... I'll actually walk around and see and I'll actually take a look around and I'll be like, I wonder if I can spot people like who are financially well off. Like uh, they gen, you know, it's like they make over a million dollars a year. You know, like I wonder if I can, if I just saw somebody, well, would I know? Like they make over a million dollars a year and would they know if they saw me? Like, you know, cause me, it's like, a, you know, I've maybe about a million and a half, two million right in a year. And I was like, I wonder if people would know if they just saw me. Like if, if you just happen to see me, uh, like uh, let's say a car was driving by and they just happen to look at me, would they be able to tell? Like this guy, uh, I can something, I can tell something about this guy. Like this guy, you know, and I was like, I wonder if I could do that. Like, you know, cause me, I'll walk around a Walmart or I'll walk around a Costco, or I'll walk around a Trader Joe's. I'll, you know, whenever I'm somewhere where there are a lot of people, a lot of people, I'll take a look around and I'll and I'll actually go. I wonder if I can spot somebody who makes as much money as me. Like I wonder and I wonder how they did it, right? I mean, because like if you asked me, I would legitimately just tell you. I had twelve thousand dollars in my bank account. I was buying and selling cattle. I found out that I could uh, buy and uh, sell these stocker calves, and uh, you know I was buying and selling these stocker calves and I was making my money back and uh, and I just got uh, and so I figured I would get in the stocker calf business. And uh, I got in the stocker calf business and uh, uh, within a year of me uh, getting in the stocker calf business, the, the markets legitimately almost doubled. And uh, I legitimately managed to turn about $12,000 into about $75,000 within about eight months, nine months. Uh, you know, that's how I got started in the stocker calf business. And uh, about, a, ha about a, a year after that mark, uh, you know, like as of right now, uh, I'm pretty good at the stocker calf business. I'm pretty good at it. Uh, and uh and right now I make uh I make like a fourteen thousand dollars a month. That's that's legitimately what happened, right? And so I wonder if I could find anybody like that. And uh, you know, I was like, I wonder if I if I legitimately just spotted them, like if I saw them, would I know? Like this is this is the guy. Like this is the guy that makes millions of dollars, I can tell. You know, just by looking at him. I wonder if I could. And I haven't been able to do it to this day. Like I'll walk around to Trader Joe's and I'll look at people. 
I'll walk around to Costco and I'll look at people and I'll walk around, uh, you know, Walmart and I'll take a look at people. And here's, you know, and I've actually talked about this, but here's from what I have seen. Here's what I hear from me just going around and looking at people. Here's what I've seen in all these different places. And, you know, even even in the hood, right? Like, uh, you know, I go to the hood all the time. And so I don't go to the hood all the time. Uh, you know, I work on the outskirts of the hood. We don't we don't we don't uh, we, uh, like our shop is on the outskirts of the hood. I mean, you would have to drive about uh, five minutes to get to the hood. And we don't actually work in the hood because the hood is very dangerous. I mean, it's very dangerous. So, uh, you know, uh, it's very dangerous. And so we, we're about five minutes away. And uh, you know, and uh, and from me, from what I've seen, you know, uh, the people like when you have somebody who's impoverished, I mean, you can uh, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not making fun of I'm not making fun of people, but I, I, I can tell when when they're impoverished. Right. I mean, uh, you know, uh, I'm not making fun of anybody. I'm not I'm not I'm not looking down on people. I've already said I don't look down on people because they make less money. And here's actually here's actually a very good way to put it. If I took somebody who was impoverished in America, like the average income for somebody who's impoverished in America is like twenty to twenty five thousand dollars a year. But half of the U.S. population makes $40,000 a year, like 50%. And then 90% of everybody makes under $90,000 a year. And so if you actually take a look at it, the, the, to go from impoverished to essentially just normal, average, it's about $15,000 a year. If you took somebody who was impoverished, legitimately uh, impoverished, the average person who was impoverished, and, and they found a way to make an extra $15,000 a year, you would essentially have that person who is the, the normal 50%, the average 50%. They would essentially be the average American. And then if you took the average American, $40,000 a year, and they found a way to make an extra $15,000 a year, you would essentially have middle class. So the difference between going from impoverished legitimately a bum borderline not not i'm not gonna say a bum well i mean but even a bum like some of these bums that sit on these corners and they and they uh, panhandle they'll they'll even make about two thousand dollars a month so that's about twenty four thousand dollars a year so essentially to go from I'm not, I'm not calling impoverished people a bum i mean i understand that there's a difference i'm not i'm not doing that i'm just saying if you took a bum and gave them an extra or and they that bum found a way to make an extra thirty forty thousand dollars a year you would essentially have the middle class american everybody's borderline a bum everybody i mean and this is and this is what i've been talking about right like if if i legitimately go and i and i legitimately just drive into the hood and i see somebody and i'm like you know this person uh you know let's just say uh, i can tell they're impoverished right i mean they're drinking a 40 right i mean they're they're wasted it's two in the afternoon they're wasted you know uh you know they look kind of raggedy and uh you know uh, they're uh, sitting there on the corner with uh five other people six seven other people and they're, uh, you know, I'm not making fun of, I'm not making fun of these people, but I mean, you're not going to make much money like that, right? I mean, if you're, if it's two in the afternoon and you're sitting there with, uh, you know, uh, half a dozen of your buddy, buddy, pal, pals, and you're all wasted, it's, you're probably not making much money. Let's just be honest. I mean, you're probably not making much money. I've already said, if you have one problem, you practically cannot out earn the problem. If, if you have one problem, that problem is drinking, you probably can't out earn it. But if you essentially took that individual and uh, that individual found a way to make an extra thirty to forty thousand dollars a year. You would essentially have a middle class American. And the way that I the way that I spoke about this was like, it, you know, everybody's practically the same. Like if you if you went into the hood and you took that person and gave them an extra fifteen thousand dollars a year, not gave them, but they found a way to make an extra fifteen thousand dollars a year, they would essentially be the person walking around Costco. That's from what I have personally observed. Like me, I, I walk around Costco and I take a good look at people. You know, I, I go to Trader Joe's, I take a good look at people. I go to the hood and I take a good look at people. Everybody's practically the exact same. Everybody is practically the exact same, like a flea in a jar. Everybody. You, I mean, you go to Costco and everybody's practically the exact same. I'm, I'm being dead serious. I mean, if you add me, I've ta you know, I've gone around and I've taken a look around. And I actually wonder when I, when I walk around, like, I wonder, like, can, like, if somebody saw me, like, would they be able to tell this guy, you know, this guy, I can tell something about this guy. This guy, you know, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, he makes a boatload of money. I don't know what it is, but he makes, I can tell that, you know, he, he is the guy I can tell. And I have actually walked around looking at people to see if I can spot anybody like me. And I have not been able to spot anybody, not a single person. And I actually took a look at the statistics 
the statistics for America over the last year of anybody possibly, you know, uh, making this much money, and it's about one in 750,000 people. And so I came to the conclusion that organically, I will probably not ever meet anybody like me. Financially, probably not ever. I mean, you're not really ever going to see anybody, and it's not just cattle, but even on cattle, you're not going to see anybody who's like, you know, uh, I run cattle on, I run commercial cattle on 10 and a half acres. I grow grass to a world-class level and I legitimately make $14,000 a year for about $1,000 a month. I legitimately make about $14,000 a month and it costs me about $1,000 a month. You're probably never going to see it. I might be the only one. And uh, money talks, right? I mean, uh, the money is the money. If you're poor, you're poor. There's a reason you're poor. And uh, if you're poor and you think highly of yourself, I mean, you're in you're in a death loop. It's like, you know, you're never going to get better. I can almost guarantee by by the time that that has happened, you're stuck that way forever. I can almost get and it's for everybody. It's like, you know, uh, well, you know, uh, you know, legitimately, if we uh, said everybody who makes under ninety thousand dollars a year is poor, that would be 90 percent of the country. You know, and I'm not saying and I've already talked about the big idea about money, but it's like at sixty thousand dollars a year. At sixty thousand dollars a year, if, if if you know you can buy about ninety eight percent of anything on the entire planet, for about sixty thousand dollars a year, like if you want to go in, you can practically buy anything on the entire planet, practically anything. You know, like me, uh, it's like me uh, with my income, with how much money I am generating in this cattle business. I legitimately pay for everything. I pay for a new tractor. I pay for my land. I pay for my business. I pay for all of this stuff, and I still have like. Nine thousand dollars a month left over cash. Eight thousand dollars a month left over. Legitimately, that's that's what money looks like, you know, uh, when you make money like this. But if you don't run a business and you don't have a hundred thousand dollar tractor, and you uh, you don't have all these cattle, then uh, then you don't, you know, uh, if you made sixty thousand dollars a year, even if you made sixty thousand dollars a year, you could you could pay for all of this. Legitimately, you five thousand dollars a month. That's about how much it costs me to do all of this. Maybe about six. You know, and the rest of the money, all of the money that I need for my business comes from the business itself. And I've already, you know, uh, but uh, I mean, unless like you legitimately, I mean, but nobody's going to make it. And here and here and, and uh, maybe when, OK, but in, and maybe when I say nobody's going to make it, I mean, maybe you actually put in the effort to try and make it and you actually go and make something of yourself. Because here's the thing. It's like if, if, if you took a person out of Costco, like if I took a person out of Costco. And I took that person out of Costco and I put him on a field and I took a bum off the corner of the street and put him on the field. If I legitimately took the guy drinking a 40, no, well, not the guy drinking a 40, the guy drinking a 40, he's, he's got massive problems. I mean, if, if you're wasted like that all the time, you're not going to be able to, you're, I mean, uh, you, you're, uh, your chances are you're not going to recover from that ever. I mean, uh, I mean, it's practically a done deal. But if you took, if, if I took a person out of Costco and I just took a uh, person, uh, just a regular person, let's just say I took a regular person out of the hood, right? Just a regular person. And I took a person out of Costco and then I took a, a bum off the corner and the bum was not like a, a major drug addict or anything. They were just a bum. They just, uh, let's say that they were a, uh, they just had a, uh, something bad happen. They're not on drugs. They're not a, they're not a, they're not a, you know, an alcoholic or anything. They're just a bum because something bad happened or, and, uh, you know, whatever. Right. And I put these three people on a field. Everybody would do about the same. Everybody would do about the same. Everybody is borderline a bum. And for somebody to go from a borderline bum to potentially the most profitable cattleman on the entire planet, you cannot do it. Not overnight, maybe not even in 10 years. I might this this farm that you're looking at might legitimately be the most profitable cattle farm on the entire planet per acre. Legitimately, it might be. I don't know a single person that's making money like me, not a single one. And so, you know, this this farm that you that, that I am recording that, that you know, uh, all that, that, that you're looking at legitimately might be the most profitable cattle farm per acre on the entire planet. I might legitimately, you know, when I take a look at the numbers, when I take a look at my numbers for the last year, there were only 20,000 people in the entire country out of 333.3 million people. Only 20,000 people made as much money as me over the last year. You know, that's, that's what the numbers are. Numbers are the numbers. 
And, and if you legitimately take a look at my numbers, I pay for everything. My cattle, my business, my truck, my house, my tractor, I pay for everything. And I still have a net excess cash flow of like $8,000, seven to $8,000 a month. That's legitimately, that's what the money looks like. And so, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, and it, it, you know, I always say, keep your BS to yourself. I mean, legit, I'm showing you my numbers and I'm, and I'm doing this in an attempt because it's like, here's the thing. It's like, you know, uh, the, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, I am currently a human being and I am alive in the year 2024. And this is essentially, this might be the most successful cattle farm one of the most successful cattle ranches on the entire planet as of this as of this day as of this day right now in the year 2024 this this might legitimately be one of the most successful cattle ranches on the entire planet and so i figured i would record it maybe you know in a hundred years uh, you know uh, i don't know you know uh, you'll take a look at this and you'll go what a primitive man, right? What a primitive man. You know, everybody has computer chips in their brains nowadays. And if we take a look at anything, we can essentially extrapolate data just by looking at anything. And we, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, and whatever. Right. I mean, but as of right now, 2024, 2024, this might be one of the most successful cattle ranches on the entire planet financially. I make about 12, 14. I, I probably say I make about fourteen thousand dollars a month. I'm going to work on increasing my cattle herd numbers, and I would say right now I make about 12, 14. But the cattle market also fell about 10%, so maybe I make about 12,000 a month. But I'm also in the process of increasing my cattle numbers. I got my uh, new field that I'm working on, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera. I got all these things uh, that I'm working on right now to, to increase my cash flow opportunity. And this is the last thing that I'll talk about before I call it a day. But about uh, maybe about uh, about three months ago, I actually sat there and I had actually made the choice, right? I said I'm going to make things difficult on myself on purpose, because over you know uh, over uh, the last uh, you know a few months before that, before I made the choice, I had just been sitting in a room collecting about seven eight thousand dollars a month. I would just sell cattle and I would just uh, uh, you know replace the animals and then I would bring home a check and I, and I would essentially just be sitting there just uh, not really pushing myself forward. Not really pushing in, uh, you know, putting in much effort to get better, nothing like that. And I was still collecting about seven thousand dollars a month, and I was like, you know, uh, the seven thousand, eight thousand dollars a month, it's nice, but I, you know, it's not going to change my life. I mean, realistically, it's like uh, it's not going to change my life. And so I figured that I would take the money and I would reinvest the money, so that I. Uh, more so than to make more money because and i've already talked about this but like when i reinvest the money right now my income is about twelve fourteen thousand dollars a month right if i take my income from fourteen thousand dollars a month to twenty thousand dollars a month my, my life is not going to change my life is essentially not going to change the money won't make a difference it's like oh man i went from making fourteen thousand dollars a month to making twenty thousand a month it, it won't really change my life but if i make fourteen thousand dollars a month and I reinvest my earnings and I take my income to $50,000 a month, then it will change my life. And uh, because right now, well, I mean, well, I mean, uh, kind of marginally, I mean, marginally, because it's like uh, anything, anything you know, like uh, that I could buy. Because oh, here's the thing. Right now, if I were to take a look at my gross income. My net income, I bring home about twelve, fourteen thousand dollars a month. My gross income is probably closer to about uh, two hundred fifty, two hundred fifty thousand. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, I make about two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, and my net income is about twelve, fourteen thousand dollars a month. It's about uh, it's about one hundred fifty grand. You know, one hundred fifty grand. That's about how much money I bring home. And uh, last year, my income was about 95. And so, uh, oh, if I push my income up to 50 grand, I mean, even right now, like legitimately, if I just wanted to run a 10 acre farm for the rest of my life, I would have more money than I could ever use. As of this day, I legitimately bring home like an excess of $8,000 a month. 
And so, uh, I'm not really doing it for the money. Well, I am doing it for the money. Like if I wasn't going to get paid, I'm not, I'm not going to do it. But I'm not saying like, uh, deep down uh, the money is not the reason, not, not the end all be all for, for me doing this. If I were to, if I were to be completely honest, the end all be all the big, the big, big reason why I'm doing this is because I think that this is challenging. I actually think that this is hard. It's actually difficult for me to work a real estate deal, run 45 cattle, you know, run a business. It's, it's difficult for me to do all the grow grass, you know, uh, maintain cattle. It's, it's, it's hard for me to do all these things. At the same time, it's difficult. And I enjoy the difficulty. That's why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because it's a challenge for me. You know, it gives me something to do when I wake up in the morning. I'm not just sitting in my room collecting $7,000 a month. No, oh, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm just sitting in a room collecting seven thousand, eight thousand dollars a month. That that I actually did that for about three months, and I was actually slowly becoming more miserable. I did not like it, and I would actually say that right now I'm not miserable at all. You know, I got a, I got ten animals in the preconditioning pen. I got thirty three animals out here. Uh, three out of ten animals in the preconditioning pen are running. You know, three out of five of the animals in the preconditioning pen were running a fever this morning. And, uh, you know, I got a sale barn date coming up uh, Monday and uh, I got a, you know, I got a, a real estate contract that I got to get proof of funding for by October 31st. And I got to get funded by the by the middle of December. And I you know and I'm doing all these things at the same time and I'm actually happier. You know, I got all these things going on and it's like I'm having to apply myself. I'm challenging myself and, uh, you know, I'm doing all these things and, and I'm, I'm actually a more, uh, I actually feel more okay with myself in this situation than I was just sitting in my room, you know, just, uh, you know, oh, well, I'm just going to run 10 acre, uh, t uh, 10 acre cattle farm forever. And, uh, you know, uh, and then just sit around and make an excess of $7,000 a month. I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I was actually kind of miserable doing that. Like if I wanted to run a 10 acre cattle farm forever, and just make $7,000 a month of excess income, I could always come back and do this. You know, like if I legitimately go out and I buy 150 acres and I say, you know what, I actually don't want to run a 150 acre cattle farm. I would rather just run a 10 acre cattle farm. And if I run a 10 acre cattle farm, I can make myself $14,000 a month. Then I'll just come back to a 10 acre cattle farm and make $14,000 a month for the rest of my life. But I don't want to do it. Not right now. You know, I would rather go and buy the uh, buy the 50 acres and then buy another 100 acres and then, uh, you know, buy 100 more cattle, run my business, push my business forward, you know, uh, check up on all my animals. I got three animals running a fever. You know, I'm actually more OK with myself in this scenario than I am just sitting in a room going, well, I'm going to run a 10 and a half acre cattle farm for the rest of my life into infinity and beyond and just make an excess, you know, make, make $14,000 a month. I'm much happier like this. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's what that, you know, I made the choice for myself. I said, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this to myself on purpose, right? I'm going to do this on purpose. I understand that it's going to be difficult, but the entire reason for me to do this is so that it's more difficult for me so that I have something that I can essentially wake up every day and apply myself to. I can challenge myself to, right? And it's like me realistically, like if I, if I push my income from 14,000 a month, to about $25,000 a month within the next six months, the extra $11,000 a month is not really going to do anything for me. It's not going to change my life at all. Even at an excess of $7,000 a month, I, I don't really even have anything that I could possibly buy. $8,000 a month of excess income, I, I don't even really have anything that I could buy. Like uh, I bought a handgun. I bought a handgun a couple of days ago or a couple of weeks ago. And that was what? Uh, 600 bucks, 500 bucks. I mean, what am I going to do? Buy 40 handguns, right? I mean, no, I'm not, right? I mean, legitimately, uh, you know, oh, uh, there, I mean, in excess of about $8,000 a month, there's legitimately nothing that I could do with the money. Legitimately, almost nothing. Granted that it's not like I'm, I'm going to go and pick up drugs, right? If I went and I did drugs or I drank a bunch of alcohol or I went on a, uh, went on a vacation every weekend, then I would, I could, I could definitely use up all the money. But, you know, uh, I've already said that uh, my whole big belief system is that decisions need to be made within a reasonable boundary. Right. I mean, like if I want to go and run more cattle, I'll go and run more cattle. If I want to go and buy more land, I'll go and buy more land. If I want to buy a hundred thousand dollar tractor, I'll buy a hundred thousand dollar tractor. If I even want to buy a hundred thousand dollar truck, I'll buy a hundred thousand dollar truck. 
You know, I can do all these things. With fourteen thousand dollars a month, I can do all of these things. It won't, it won't, you know, and it will. I will legitimately still have like five thousand dollars a month left over. And so, uh, but more so than anything else, the reason I am doing this, the reason I am pushing myself forward like this, is so that I intentionally have a challenge. I would like myself to be applying. I would like to apply myself on a daily basis. Do something that is difficult on purpose with the intentions of furthering myself spiritually, financially, everything, right? That's the that's that's the big reason. And it gives me something to do. Like when when something is hard, it, you know, it gives me something to do, right? Like I got to run the temps on all my calves and uh, I got to give them all medication. And then uh, I got to, you know, take animals to the market on Monday. And then I got to go and talk to a banker about uh, getting financing done for a new piece of property, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Grow the, uh, grow the size of my herd by about 50% over the next six months. All these things, they're, they're, uh, they're a challenge for me. And uh, I, I, I enjoy that. I want it to be like that. I did it. I did it on purpose. And so that's it for me today, YouTube. Y'all have a good one.